Hi, this is Neelam from Get Digi With It. I'm here with the Online Prosperity Show and I'm about to show you how to get Digi With It and see a return on investment for your business. Now, welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today we're literally getting Digi With It with Neelam. Neelam, how are you going, my love? Very well, thanks. And you? Great stuff. Now, Nilam is an SEO, SEM expert that has just started off her own digital marketing agency so she can help other businesses to actually get a proper return on their investment. Nilam, what got you and what inspired you to do what you're doing right now? Yeah, so basically I started in the email marketing, social media space, um, working for like companies. And then from there, obviously, as you're working in digital marketing, you realize you need to know everything in the space to be able to do what you're doing properly. So from there, I started to learn more about SEO and SEM and started to work in a few agencies. But working in those agencies made me realize that not all businesses are getting all the attention they need to be able to be successful. So from there, I decided I can help people get digi with it a lot better. And so I started my own business. Great stuff. I, I can't help but want to get whenever I hear your the name of your business. How did that how did that come up? Is that your creative side or is there some sort of influence that came for you to choose the name Get It Digi with it? Yeah, so basically I'd been thinking about it for a week and I wanted something to be professional, obviously. But um yeah, so I was just sitting down at home and watching TV and just singing songs to myself and basically I was singing Get Jiggy with it and I was like what if it was get digi, digi with it? And Great. Right. Okay. Yeah. Have, you, have you started sort of throwing it around to friends, family, or other business people? How, how are they taking it? Is it something that um, it's, because obviously it's catchy, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, 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 and it's something that people won't forget. How, how are they talking about it at a barbecue or at bingo or something yeah. like that? How, how are they moving the name, getting Digi with it uh, there? Yeah. So first, obviously, I told my boyfriend about it and he was, he had the same reaction as you, basically. A lot of people are just like, ah, oh, yeah, starting to dance. So it's all been very positive and I've had a few people just be like, I love your name. So yeah, nothing but positive, positive reactions, which is always good. Great. Now with a name like that comes with a lot of responsibility. How then are you going to uphold that dancey feely, that, <laughs> that, you know, comfort that you're going to show your, your customers that, you know, whenever you come in around here, we, 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 we look after you and you live dancing. Yeah. So basically I think a lot of that has to do with the branding that you put out as well. So if my touch points are all very similar, then people will know that's what to expect. And then when they meet me as well, I think it's important that, you know, I come across as casual. So I don't like to take the business seriously in the sense of wearing a suit and things like that. It's more, you know, talk to people one-on-one, -on -one, obviously have them understand my experience and the knowledge so that they're confident in that digi aspect. And then from there, start to get more personal, get to know them, get to know what they're like and kind of meet them at that level and yeah, make them laugh. That's, I think that's the number one. If you can make someone laugh, then you're doing a good job. Amazing stuff. All right. So when somebody comes in with their business and it's not really getting digi, what's the first thing that you look at and um, what, what sort of things are you looking at within a business so that, you know, they're perfect fit for you so they can leave dancing, um, you know, as, 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 as your brand is going to be portraying. Yeah. So obviously it'll depend on exactly what they want, what they need or what aspect of digi they want to get digi with um with it with but basically as a kind of basic thing that i do is i'll obviously get to know the person first so if i can see that the person is in line with their company or is not in line with the company that'll give me an indication of whether it'll be successful in the future as well so if you've got somebody who's you know trying to really portray an organic um product but they themselves don't live that lifestyle then from there you can kind of hit red flags flag those red flags and say i don't think this is working um, and then from there, obviously, look into what they've done in the past, look into the analytics of how those things have worked, talk, to, talk about their experience, about where they want to take things and kind of just, it's more of like an audit of their business, really, that I'd start with to make sure that there hasn't been anything that's gone wrong in the past or that we can just easily look at quick wins that can be implemented straight away and understand the digital space, the way they've been interacting with the digital space and how that can actually change. Because I think without knowing the past, you're not going to be able to really 
make a difference in the future. You actually touched on a really important aspect because um, in the last sort of 10 to five to 10 years, a lot of people have just been inclined to start their own business and do something. But a lot of people are not really aligned to the end product. And you did touch on that. And I see some people are probably, I'll give you an example. They're a biker, but they are trying to sell baby clothes. You know what I mean? And so it's, it's a whole disconnect with the product and, and the person that's trying to put it out there. How, how then are you correcting that? Because you did mention that that's the first thing that you look at. So yeah. how do you, how do you collect that, correct that alignment? Yeah, so luckily I haven't met anybody that hasn't been aligned to their brand or their product, which is good. But if I was to meet somebody like that, you know, I think it'd be important to dig into why they, they did that. So why is that bikey selling baby clothes? It could be at the end of it that it's because they have their own kids or they have nephews and nieces that they love and that love translates into their baby products, which means that maybe you're not selling baby products, you're selling baby products for bikies, which becomes its own meat for you know, people who love bikes and motorbikes. So that becomes your own niche and kind of, I think understand where the, how they got to what they're selling and see if you can kind of create a pathway that's more aligned to them through that, whether that's making the product more niche or kind of looking how to make the, pro, uh, how to make the product broader or bringing somebody else along. It may actually be that that person's been inspired to do that, to bring, start a company because of their partner or because of a friend so, you know, just, I think it's important to understand where it, that inspiration came from and kind of draw that into the business. Great. Because obviously with this day and age, you know, you, you gotta be putting content out there so that people get to know, like, and trust you. Yeah. And if your content is not aligned to the person or the, the, the stuff that you're selling, it might become very difficult for people to do business with you. Now, how do you think your business is going to change other people's businesses? So I think firstly, I think um, it's going to change people's businesses because they'll see how powerful social media marketing for one is and the rest of the digital marketing that helps support it. I think at the moment, as digi digital marketing is seen as an important part of businesses, but one part that I don't think they utilize well or that can be utilized well from my experience with customers is email marketing and social media marketing because they don't understand the ROI that can come from that or the how the investment from that can lead to, you know, so much ROI in the future. So I think um, where I come in is kind of helping them understand, not only show them what social media can do, but help them, or the digital marketing space in general, but help them understand why or how that's important. So edu by educating them and also showing them. Great. Well, okay. So as a business person, I've used email ever since I started my business and it was free and I've been on Facebook, liking, poking, commenting, sharing, whatever I'm doing on that particular day. Why do I have to pay now? Yeah. So I think, you know, if something can be monetized, it will become monetized. If you are able to tap into something that can make you money, why not? So I think that's a major reason for why you have to pay now but i don't think that's such a bad thing either because it means that you're only going to put money money into something if you're seriously into it so it kind of makes you reflect as well on is this something that i really want to invest more than just my time into so you know it's got its ups and downs <laughs> <laughs> great stuff I'm, I'm i'm sure your clients are gonna love your stuff and everything else now you did say you just recently transitioned all right from working in a corporate environment and now you're gonna you know head off and start off on your own what sort of advice would you give somebody who's on the fence and they're just thinking oh i don't know maybe i'll speak to neelam um you know find out how she did it or get the motivation or inspiration from yourself as to you know what do they need to prepare or how do they make the leap essentially? Yeah. So I think it's important um, if you are on the fence to, under, to, you know, just go back to the basics of making that list of pros and cons in saying that I don't always think that a list that comes out with more cons means that you shouldn't do something. I think the way I um, approached starting this business was to work full time while doing my business, then transition to part time. And now obviously I'm doing this business full time. So it depends on the type of person you are. If you're like me and you like to have a plan and a structure and you like to know that you're secure, then take gradual steps. So make sure you're constantly 
planning for those gradual steps so that if something does change quickly, you're able to respond to it. But if you are somebody who likes to take risks and you do have a support system behind you where you can be supported financially and emotionally, then just go for it. Like unless the reason for you not wanting, unless the only reason that should be stopping you is that you don't love it. If you love it, you'll find a way to make a way, whether that's slowly or whether that's making the leap. Just make sure you do have support behind you financially and emotionally. It always um, goes down to the aspect of money, right? But obviously you've done it. There you are. You're shining and you're getting digi with it. What should we expect about your brand, you or anything else that you touch in the next, say, five, ten years? What are we to expect from getting digi with it? Well, I think most people seen get digi with it instead of get jiggy with it now. <laughs> no, <laughs> kidding. Um, I think you can just expect growth, really. Like my aim for the next five to ten years is to to be international at that point and to just be at a stage where I, where businesses know my company to be one where you go to, to see results. So I want to be an agency that is purely results driven. It will come as well as having those results. It'll come with the idea that you'll be personally speaking to somebody. So that's something if I was to have a point of differentiation in the next five to 10 years for the business, it would be an international company that is still personal and, has proven ROI for their clients since the beginning of time. <laughs> wow. Everybody's going to want to be climbing all over each other <laughs> to get to, um, you know, get in touch with you. Now, Nilam, how can people get a hold of you uh, just in case they really want to get digi with it? So you can send me an email, a phone call. You can inbox me on Instagram. But basically, if you go to www.getdigiwithit.com.au, you can find all my contact details there. Um, also, have a Facebook and Instagram, of course. So. However you like to get in contact, feel free in that way. Great stuff. It's been fantastic and phenomenal trying to get digital with you today, Nilam. And I really, really appreciate and commend the journey that you're about to start, you know, helping other people get a positive return of investment on their investment, uh, on their businesses. Thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much. Great stuff. Guys, if you've been watching this video and you're really keen on uh, really getting digi with it, contact Neil. I'm, I'm going to put in all the information at the bottom there. And please subscribe to this channel so you too can start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Now, this has been Prosper and thank you so much for watching this episode today.